Hallelujah. It's great to be here. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Wherever you are connecting with us this morning, thank you for uh, worshiping with us this morning. We give the Lord glory. We thank him for another wonderful day to be gathered in his presence. So wherever you are, begin to appreciate the Lord. Thank him for the gift of life. It's a new day. It's a brand new day. That your life is a miracle. So begin to give him thanks. Oh God, we are so grateful. We thank you for the gift of another day. Thank you for watching over us while we slept last night. Thank the Lord for great sleep. For those of us that slept at home, thank him that you were able to sleep last night. Because being able to sleep is a miracle from the Lord. So thank him for the gift of sleep. And if you were unable to sleep, perhaps because you were at work or you were busy doing something different, thank the Lord also that you even have a job you can go to. So give him the praise for his faithfulness and for his mercies. We are alive is a miracle. So thank him for the gift of another day. Thank, thank him for a, a sound mind. Thank him for his faithfulness and his goodness that he continues to supply our needs according to his riches and glory. You may be aware that the lockdown has been extended now to the 7th of May. It has been by the grace of God that we've, we've, we have survived thus far. Let's give him thanks because we believe he will keep us for the remaining days of this lockdown. So just worship him. Father, we are grateful. We thank you for your faithfulness. We adore you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you for your protection over us, O oh God. Even during this corona, coronavirus lockdown, we are grateful and we say thank you for everything in the name of Jesus. So as the lockdown continues, you may be wondering how you're going to survive the remaining days. I have a psalm for you this morning to encourage you. And that is Psalm 121 verse 2. Psalm 121 verse 2 reads, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Where does the help come from? Perhaps if, you've been, if you're one of those that think that their help will come from area father or from uh, 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 godmothers or godfathers or people that they know. I mean, the situation we're experiencing right now has shown to us that no human being has the answer to our problem. It's only Jesus that's got the, the answers to our problem. So begin to trust that the Lord will send you help, even from the most unusual places you're not expecting. Trust that this Psalm, Psalm 121, 121 verse 2, um, God will use it to send you helpers where you need them most. So as we're going to worship the Lord this morning with this song, I want to encourage you that God will defend you. He will fight for you in the remaining days of uh, the coronavirus lockdown and even beyond that because he said he, will, he is our helper and our help cometh from him. And I know that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. I encourage you to continue to follow the government uh, guidelines and uh, rules concerning uh, how we should behave and what we should do during this uh, lockdown. Please uh, make sure you wash your hands. Make sure you stay safe. Make sure also that you don't go out visiting people. If you are essential uh, service workers, be sure that God will watch, watch over you. He will keep you and he will protect you in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, church, that these two shall pass. It will definite, definitely pass and we'll all be complete when this, this is all over. We'll come together again and honor the name of the Lord. So this morning we're just going to worship the Lord with this song and, and then we'll just spend a minute or so to pray and commit the remaining days of this coronavirus unto the Lord. So join me as we sing this song, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just uh, raise your hands and worship the Lord. We are worshiping him in the beauty of his holiness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Our God is good. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Okay, so let's get going now. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his soul. Lean Oh, my soul, 
worship your holy name. So let's begin to turn that worship song to, to worship as we just bless the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, begin to bless his name. Bless the name of the Lord because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy to be adored. He knows the future. We don't know. So begin to commit the future onto his hands. Pray that he will hide you under his wings. Pray that he will keep you. He will protect you. Pray also for our NHS workers and all essential workers. Pray that the Lord will bless them and protect them and preserve them. Pray also that this this plague of coronavirus will pass over as you begin to apply the blood of Jesus upon your life, upon your family, upon your property. Decree and declare that it will not come nigh your dwelling. Father, we commit our lives unto your hands, Lord. Another 21 days, O oh God, to wait and or wait upon you, Father. Lord, we pray, O oh God, concerning this lockdown extension, O oh God, that has been extended to the 7th of May here in the United Kingdom. Father, our lives are in your hand. According to your word that you encouraged us with this morning in Psalm 121, verse to oh God. Our help, Lord, our help coming from you and from you alone. So we trust in you that you watch over us and see us through this very period, oh God. That Lord God Almighty, when this lockdown is all over, we'll all come together complete to the honor of your name. We apply the blood of Jesus upon our lives, upon our family members, upon our friends, upon everyone watching and worshiping with us this morning. We pray, oh God, you protect us day and night. We thank you. We give you praise for hearing our prayers. Lord, as we hear your word this morning, we pray, oh God, that your word will do us good. I decree that your word will be healing to those that are sick. Your word will bring liberation to those that are bound. Your word will bring comfort to the, those that are discouraged, oh God. Heavenly Father, we pray you be glorified. Be honored, oh God, in the beauty of your holiness. And for those who don't know you as Lord and Savior, we pray, oh God, that through hearing your word today, your Holy Spirit will convict them and they will turn to you. Those that are already Christians, we pray you will strengthen their walk in you and bless them, oh Father. Thank you, gracious Lord, for hearing our prayers. Hallowed be your holy name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. I encourage you to uh, stay back now. And uh, listen as the senior pastor comes to present the word of God. Please be an evangelist. Share this link with other people so they can come on board also and worship with us. God bless you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. May his name be highly exalted. I'm so glad to come your way once again. I want to thank God for his faithfulness. We are having unusual service. May his name be highly exalted. We're so grateful for this wonderful privilege to meet you wherever you are. I want you to just spend these few minutes and let's study the word of God together. And I know that your life will not be the same again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Our dear Lord, I want to thank you most sincerely for yet another beautiful Sunday morning. Lord, I want to pray as we hear your words that the words that will come today will meet us at the point of our knees that you will transform us and do us well. And Lord, we want to pray that the entrance of your word today will give us wonderful, great understanding to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. So today we want to learn about Solomon. You know, for some time we did a series of teaching on David. And a couple of weeks ago we ended that or we took a break because of Easter, so that we can talk about Easter. Today we are going to talk about Solomon. If I the beginning of our series on Solomon. For record, Solomon was the son of David, the greatest king ever in Israel. And Solomon, the wisest king ever, we are going to learn a lot about him this season. So we are talking about Taking charge. I've titled my message today, Taking Charge. We're going to learn from the life of Solomon how he took charge after the demise of his father. After the death of David, how he took charge. Then apply it to our daily activities, to our situation today. We are in a season of lockdown and we are having service in an unusual way. In the comfort of our, of our homes. All over the world, we just give God all the glory. So sit down, enjoy yourself, feel comfortable, and you will be blessed one way or the other in Jesus' name. 
So let me give you a background to this story of uh, Solomon. As we said, Solomon was the son of David. And now he was the one that David chose. By extension, God also chose him to be the next king after David. David had, had other sons. In fact, he had, Solomon had an elder brother in the person of Adonijah. So that one thought, ah, because my, when my father died, I'm, I'm not the next one. I'm the, I'm the, the eldest child of, the eldest surviving child of David. Definitely, I'm going to be the one to take the throne. He never knew that God has a different plan. The Bible says that he went about organizing coronation party. He invited the who and who's in town to come to the party. And he excluded Solomon. Solomon was not invited. Solomon's mother was not invited. Abishai, who was the kind of the nurse that was looking after David, was not invited. David himself was not even invited. He organized a powerful party called the chief of army staff. Joab was there. Uh, Abiata represented the priesthood. He was there. So the great men and probably women who were there to make the occasion really great and thick. In fact, he even invited all his siblings, all David's children except Solomon. So they went and they had a wonderful time. They were enjoying themselves. They were doing coronation party. And meanwhile, Solomon that was not invited was being installed as a king. My prayer for you, my dear church, is that you'll be at the right place at the right time. That you will never be in the wrong place at all. Because when things are happening and you are going with the wrong crowd, you will be in the wrong place and you miss out on God's blessing. My prayer for you is that you will be in the right place so that you continue to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Solomon was in the right place. So immediately, uh, David was made to be aware that they are having a coronation party without his permission. And more importantly, Solomon that you have chosen, because the Bible says that David sworn to Beersheba, the wife of David and the mother of Solomon, that Solomon would definitely be the next king. So David was going to honor his words. I said, don't worry, call uh, the key made that matter. He said, okay. You people come, Zadok, and they call a uh, uh, prophet Nathan. So, and, and the chief of uh, the guard. So, I follow, go to the street, they go and announce and tell them that this is not the news king. Meanwhile, people were doing party and somebody was being installed. That was the story of Solomon. And eventually, David told him to come and sit with him on the throne there. Let's be king together. <laughs> Meanwhile, party was going on, and immediately the news got to them that. We are here celebrating the real king has been restored. The Bible said that was the end of the party, and everybody ran away for their dear lives because there was not a new king in town. And now this Solomon was there sitting, enjoying the throne under the tutelage of his own father, David. And as life is, and as all of us will experience, David eventually passed out, passed on. And when David passed on them, so Solomon was not left alone. But before Solomon, before David passed on, he told the congregation of Israel that Solomon was young and tender. Hallelujah. That's a very good word. He told the people, though, please support him. Solomon was young and tender. Probably, we didn't really have a... He couldn't give a chronological age of his uh, of Solomon, but if you look at, if you study properly, probably he was at the age of 20. So he must have been very young. And he was taking a very big responsibility. But one thing is certain. Your age, when it comes to the things of God, the age doesn't matter. You know, Paul was speaking to Timothy. He wrote to Timothy. In Timothy, chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse, no, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 4 verse 12 he said let no man despise the youth Timothy was a young pastor, well, in fact he was a young bishop, for records the youngest bishop in his time a bishop of Ephesus he wrote to him, he said let no man look down on you because you are young so if you want people to continue to respect you in spite of your age, there are certain things you must do and that's exactly what uh, Solomon did during his time. 
He took charge. In fact, the scripture says, what well, we're going to read today. We're going to read First King chapter 2. Let's see the way the, the King James described him. And then we'll also look at New Living Translation. Because I love the way the New Living Translation also, used, also put it. So let's start with this place. First Kings chapter 2. This is, where I, this, is where we are, this is where I took my uh, topic from. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. The last part. You see, and the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Now, if you are using the New Living Translation, it said the kingdom was under the grip of Solomon. That means Solomon was in charge of the kingdom. Now, for Solomon to be in charge of the kingdom, there were certain things he did. And those things helped him to be fully in charge. So that people would not look down on him that he was inexperienced. That he was a political neophyte. Somebody that was not somebody that does not know what he's doing. But Solomon proved to them, although he was young, but he was carrying the grace of God. Every responsibility that God will give you at this season, your age doesn't matter. The grace to accomplish receiving the name of Jesus. So Solomon took charge. What did he do? So when he now when he now sat on the throne, he now realized they now told him that your brother Adonijah wants to see you. That he was hiding. He thought uh, he's going to be in trouble, so he has gone to seek for refuge. He said, "Don't leave him. Leave him. Let him come." Say Adonijah. If he, that's, that's First Kings chapter one verse fifty-two. Now. He said Adonijah. So long as you remain lawyer, lawyer, nothing will happen to you. Go home, go and rest. He sent him home. Now, after the death of David, do you know what Adonijah did? Adonijah came to meet Beersheba, the mother of Solomon. Like in our present day, they call them Mother Excellency. The mother, because Solomon was young now, so the mother was there to guide him. The mother, he came to the mother and said, Madam, please, can you help me speak to your son? He said, What do you want? Say, Talk to him. Tell him that I need to have. I need to have that my father's not. Abi said that he should be my concubine, or rather, he should be my wife. Ah, the woman said, Is that all that you want? He said, Okay, that's what you want. You want Abi said to be your wife. He said, I'm going to test Solomon. And it, true to her word, she went to meet Solomon, her son. I said, Solomon, look at your brother. Uh, thank God, the way God has established you, you are now in charge. Uh, thank God the way he fought your battles for you. Uh, hey, then you are a big man. So we thank God for your life. So do you know what I want from you, my son? Is that this man has come to meet me. He said, Abby said he wants to marry her. Solomon, I said, Mommy, <laughs> I should give Abby Saj to Adonijah. Uh, if I, Mommy, tell me to get off from the throne so that you just give the throne to so why would I give Adonijah my father's nurse? Giving Adonijah my father's nurse is a clear indication that I have, have that, that I have abdicated the throne. Because don't forget, on the side of Adonijah, he's got powerful people like Joab, the chief of army staff. On the side of Adonijah, he has Abiata, the priest. So now the wife, the thing that my father left behind. The last woman they all everybody knew that was with him, which was a prized asset. I should now go and give that one to Adonijah. That means it's like I've given the throne to Adonijah. For that reason, Solomon said Adonijah was there because he has overstepped his boundaries. So he eliminated Adonijah, his own brother. Then he called Joab. You know that you are the chief of army staff. While my father was alive, you were always killing everybody. In fact, you went to kill Abner, the chief of army staff of Saul. Nobody sent you. you. On your own, without permission, you went to kill him. Amasa, you went to kill him. See, everybody, you are just so rough. Joab, today you are going to die. Joab, the Bible says, ran to the tabernacle. Went to the altar, took the horn there, and tried to say, well, I ran here, nobody can do me anything. I'm not a refugee. No, refugees 
the way even it is in present, the way people run into any country as a refugee, they are normally protected by those countries. It's like when we were even young. I remember so young those days, if I offend my dad and maybe pursue him and I run to a neighbor's house, I'm secure because as soon as I get into the neighbor, the neighbor says, mm, don't come to my house, then he will keep me and protect my father. Say, okay, don't worry, you stay there, don't come to my house until everything cools down, the neighbor can take you in the evening and say, oh, go and meet your daddy and set to everything. So whenever you, anything is pursuing you and you run into the tabernacle, the only way that you can be found guilty if it's a murder. And that is the fact that you are now into the tabernacle. You can be able to fight for justice. You can be able to look for trial where the elders can set you free. So Joab enter the tabernacle. Then Solomon said, come out. He said, he's not coming out. He's going to stay there. Then he said, he not send uh, Benaiah to go in there and kill him. He thought Benaiah cannot enter the tabernacle. But he forgot that Benaiah was from the priestly family. Although he was an army officer, but he was also from the priestly family. So he can go in. So he went to kill him. That's number two. Shema was also another wonderful man that was also being washed carefully as a rebel. Do you know it was that man that cost David when David was running away from Absalom that cost him that was throwing stone throwing death at David. So you David that's good for you. Your son has rebelled against you. You will die. You will die by fire because you stole the throne from the so, you know he abused David and cost David. But thank God the rebellion did not kill David. David survived the rebellion. And the man was still there. So Solomon told him, said, look, you are on quarantine. Just like we are today, we are on lockdown. Say you are here by quarantine to, to Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. Oh. If you leave Jerusalem without permission, you'll be in trouble. The man didn't know that Sol uh, Solomon was serious. He left to look for his servants in God. And before he came back, Solomon was told. Solomon invited him. And Solomon eliminated him because the man broke the rule. Three executions. The last one, Abiata, who was a priest. Should it have gone with Adonijah? He told him, I said, well, I won't kill you because you were very loyal to my father. Both of you were running all over the places. When Saul was pursuing you, I will leave you. But please, you will no more be a priest. You are here by relief of that office. In line with the prophecy given to Eli's family, because Abiata was of the lineage of Eli. He said, no. Eli finished. So that was the end of Eli's family. So they now put Zadok, who was from the lineage of Aaron. So you can imagine all these people that were around Solomon. They were people that went to rebel with Adonijah. And now Solomon realized that for him to totally rule, he needed to get rid of all these people so that he would not be free. And the Bible says immediately he got rid of all these troublesome people. He immediately got rid of them, he now took charge. And the Bible says, the country was in his firm grip. The kingdom was in his firm grip. That means he was calling the shots. He was not in charge. That was Solomon's situation. So how does this message apply to us today? We are now in a long down period. COVID-19 is a plague and is destroying people. But I pray for you that when the spirit, the angel of COVID-19 is coming, Passover shall happen in your house in the name of Jesus. When the angel of death is coming, they shall not come near your dwelling place in the name of Jesus. So, this story today is taking charge. What God wants from me and you is that we should be in charge of the situation that is happening today. Now, because of the fact that this coronavirus issue is a new, uh, rather it's, it's a new virus, a lot of, we don't know much. So because of that, there's news all over the places. People with their different stories, some bring all kinds of cures, some bring all kinds of conspiracy theories. So one of the ways to take charge is the way you manage the news. So you must take charge in the way you manage the news. Not all the news out there 
that are made for you. For me, I said I belong to a lot of platforms, platforms of various kinds. But and I see things being sent to me. I look at it. If I see that it's not my own, I just have to move on with it. I don't waste my time. I, if possible, I could just delete it because it's not my it's not my portion. But if you give room to the news and you start digesting, you start thinking about it, you will be polluted. So one of the ways to take charge is that you must make sure that all this news that is coming does not affect you. My dear church, you cannot affect the news. The news must come. If you only tell the news all over the places. You know, my grandfather told me so many years ago that you cannot stop the bed from flying over your head. You can't do anything about the bed. The bed all over, they all fly. But what you can do is that you can stop the bed from staying on top of your head. So if a bed want to pitch on top of my head, I could just say, oh, no, you bed, leave my head. My smooth head. But I cannot stop the bed from flying. My dear, we cannot stop news from coming to us. But what we do from what we do with the news is within our control. And that is one of the ways you can take charge. Now the Christians in Berea, let's look at that. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 verse 11. Let me tell you what happened there. Because the, the Paul, when he was preaching, just preached to the first set of Christians in Thessalonica. Uh, they just heard the word, oh, this man was great. Although there was a riot there, then they, were, they eventually had to leave Thessalonica. They now moved to a place called Berea. There is a way the Bible describes the Christians in Berea. And that's exactly the kind of way I want to, I want to look at your situation. Number, uh, Acts 17, verse 11. The Bible said these, that means the Christians in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. So when you get all kinds of news, what do you do with the news? Find out if they are true. No matter whoever is giving it, no matter how the news fantastically is coming from whoever is calling himself the greatest or the most anointed man in the world, by their check and make sure it is balanced with the word of God. Anything that is not in line with the word of God is not good for your mind. So the word of God says that, look, we should not be tossed one for that is Ephesians. Let me read that place. Ephesians... Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Ephesians 4, 14. The Bible says that henceforth, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slave of men, coming craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive so no matter how highly placed they are, if they come with the word, it might even be those things that sweet you because there are some of us, there are things we like to hear that make us feel better. But be very careful. That are these things, these people saying, are they, these things in line with the word of God and not allow people to play on your sentiments. People to make you to be happy nah, so that you can be, oh, they are good. You know. That what they are doing or what they are teaching may not even move you to your next level. So those people, please be careful. Manage the news. The news that will make you to be afraid. Please run away from those news. People that will help you to move you to your next level. Those are the news that you should be listening to. Be in charge. Be in charge. There is something I've learned as a Christian so many years ago. There are people, no matter how any place they are to me, if I know that whenever I have a conversation with this set of people, anytime I have a conversation with them, the words they give me, they, they, they don't uh, defy me, they don't pollute me, or they make me to look down on certain people, or they make me to not be friendly with certain people. I run away from them. No, I don't even care who they are. I just run away because I don't want anybody to drag me back. That is my desire for you. That please take charge. All those news that will come your way, make sure that you filter through 
and the ones that are not good, take them away. Solomon was a king that respected his mother. The mother came and said, my son, I want you to give Abishag as a wife to Adonijah. Ideally, Solomon would say, oh yes, mommy, thank you very much. But Solomon realized that that information is not a good one. Why would I give Abishag to Adonijah? Giving Abishag is a clear indication that I have, ab is, is that I have abdicated the throne. Ad Adonijah is a rebel. You don't trust rebels. They can tell you that, oh, yeah, I'm, I've changed, sir, I've changed. A rebel is a rebel. If somebody has a mind to rebel against you, the reason that they are begging you today is because you've caught them. And if you give them another opportunity, they are going to plan and they are going to come harder. You know, the scripture was saying that if you cast out the devil away and you leave that place open, he said that uh, you don't occupy that, that heart. He said the, uh, that devil with those demons, they'll go and rescue seven stronger ones to come back. That is who a rebe is. If a rebe, if God deliver you from the hand of a rebe, please, when you are dealing with them, you have to be very careful. A friend of mine told me so many years ago when we were in the school, he said, if you want to eat with the devil, you have to use a long spoon. I don't know whether they are eating with the devil. He said, when you want to eat with the devil, use a long spoon. I said, hey, what does that mean? He said, you have to be extra crafty when you are dealing with your crafty men. Adonijah was dangerous. Although, the reason, although he's telling Solomon, I said, I know it was God that appointed you. It's because he has been humiliated. If he has another opportunity, he will hit Solomon very hard. And one of the ways to hit Solomon had is that if he could get that lady, who was now the favorite wife. Though, though the, the scripture said that that woman never had sexual intercourse with David. But more or less, it was, she was seen as the latest wife of David. And the community respected her because she's the one that keep David uh, bed. She was the one that was keeping David bed warm. She was caring for David. That is not the kind of person that you should give away as a prize asset. You know, in the place I was born, people practice polygamy. They have plenty wives. So what which means they have wife one, wife two, wife three, wife four, wife five, like that. So in most cases, the youngest one are the favorites. Though there's a common saying that it is the one that does what the man likes that is always a favorite. So if the man does timetable, say on Monday is the wife one, Tuesday wife two, Wednesday wife three, Thursday wife four, Friday were five. So the maybe Saturday is reserved for the one that takes care of the man very well. Then Sunday, maybe because it's Sunday. So that one is day off for everybody. After all, God rested one day. That woman was a prized asset. Was a prized asset. So that is the one that Adonijah was now asking. And the mother was coming to plead on his behalf. He said, although I love my mother, Although you are very special, Mother Excellency, when it comes to this issue, I don't want to compromise. And immediately, Adonijah was cut off. So, my dear, whoever sends you a news, if that news will not move you to your next level, please delete the news. Take charge, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. The second thing I noticed is that he got rid of all those rebels. And he was moving with the right association. Adonijah's group was the wrong one. So everybody that was in Adonijah's group were eliminated. But those that were on the side of Solomon, they were all rewarded. Zadok was now made a priest. Uh, Benaiah was now made the chief of army staff after the, after the destruction of Joab. And uh, one other one. So you see, those people, they were all well cared for. Okay, Nathan was the, uh, the prophet of the land. They were all well rewarded because they were in the wrong, they were in the right group. My dear church, I want to plead with you that wherever you are this season, you must make sure you are, you are moving with the right set of people. You are discussing with the right set of people. There are some people that are anti-Christ. They are anti-church. You shouldn't be identified with them. Because everything they will tell you, they will pollute you. They will work against church. They will work against Christ. 
whatever the people you should be, I say, I'm just in their group. I'm not a, they are not my friend, but I just sit there. The Bible said that you sitting there and you are listening to them. The same judgment is coming for you. So those groups, they are not good groups. So one of the ways to teach her is that those that will pollute you, you stay away from them. There's a lady that came to this church so many years ago from America. She was living here in London before she relocated to America. She told us a story, and this story, I really love the story. And I, I think I reflect on it a lot of times. She said that when she was a young lady, there was somebody, you know, young ladies are trusting God for a husband, so she was trusting God for some time, but eventually got somebody. And so she was so excited, hey, hey bro. So you know, started, you know, took the young man, introduced, introduced the young man to the pastor, and uh, they were now trying to prepare to end the marriage. Suddenly, she now realized that this young man was not disrespecting her pastor. The young man was not disrespecting her church. Every time the man comes to the church, he bad the, the man bad the church. The woman, I mean, sorry, yeah, the man bad the church, bad the pastor. He doesn't say anything good. Ah, the woman was watching. She said, I don't feel very comfortable. This has been people have been with for a very long time. Said, I don't mind that. He will abuse So the woman, do you know what she did? In spite of the fact that she was trusting God for a husband, she cut off the relationship. <laughs> I'm always surprised, huh? You see this fine bobo, you are living in that way. This fine bobo, we could start now, but I can see that there's a bleak future. And do you know, eventually left that young man. And before the young man, before they even left, another sister in the same church has grabbed the young man, has colored the, as we say, just took the young man and quickly went to marry him. So this young lady waited after her, and eventually got her husband. They are both settled in America with their children now, so they are doing very well. But do you know what happened? Few years down the uh, line, that young man maltreated that young lady was not giving her serious beating, abusing her a lot. Physical abuse. And today they are no more together. The marriage has been destroyed. Uh, children are now scattered all over the places. That one was not careful. He was desperate to settle. But this other woman noticed something. That if this man does not respect me now, he's not going to respect me in the future. So the kind of company you keep can also determine that you are really in charge. So Solomon, those rebellious people, people that don't have values for good relationship. You can imagine Joab, who was a nephew to David, rebel against David. Actually, Solomon was like a first Solomon was a first cousin to Joab. They were first cousins because Joab was a was the son of David's sister. So which means Joab's uncle was David. So he rebelled against his uncle. Because he wanted to make sure that he perpetuated as the chief of army staff. So Solomon got rid of all of them and make sure that he was not in charge. But there, there's a common saying that birds of the same feather flocks together. Those that see the vision, those that see God the way you see it, those are the people you should identify with. Those that view issues the way you view them, those are the good ones. Please identify with them. And God will continue to bless you richly in Jesus' name. So Solomon took charge and God honored him. Finally, another lesson I want to bring to your attention. Solomon had a focus. Solomon was a man of peace. He was a man of peace. Do you know that Solomon never went to war? <laughs> Solomon didn't go to war. There were two things that he did to establish that he was a man of peace. Solomon wiped out rebellion. During Solomon's time, there was nothing like rebellion. Nobody rebelled. Even though it's tax. The tax system was, for if I was outrageous, he overtaxed the people. Because they have to wait till he die before they start protesting. During Solomon's time, there was nothing like rebellion. And during his time, there was no war. So he was actually a man of peace. So we too can be men and women of peace. And by the special grace of God, we shall get there. So he had a focus. And what was this focus? That he will remain on the throne. And that it's not that he will only remain on the throne. That the David's dynasty will be uh, not only established, but will be perpetuated. Now look at the, look at like, let me Let me end with this scripture. That's the first kings. First kings. Mm-hmm. 
first Kings chapter two. Let me read the verse forty five. The Bible says, Look at Solomon. And King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established forever. That's the focus. So anything that want to work against that, now you will make sure that they are eliminated. My dear church, our desire is this, is that the kingdom of God be established here on it, that we be men and women that will work for the kingdom, and that just not, not just that, we also work for the kingdom to come. That is the mandate we have been given. Let's work towards it. And one of the ways to work towards it is that we, are not, we don't allow the news. The Bible will say he has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear. So anything that will bring fear to you, all those news that will make you to be afraid, please run away from there. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. That is who we are in the Lord. So the final thing that he was focused. The Bible says, in, in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 he said that we should look unto Jesus Jesus is our focus we should focus I remember as a young man so many years ago you know some of these photographers before they take your picture they will say oh we have to focus I am now blessed with a good word now we now have to focus you just bring out your phone you just take you don't need to focus automatically it's order it's automatic it's auto, auto focus we should focus focus on Jesus that's my prayer for you. As we walk in obedience, may we not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. My prayer for you as I conclude this message is that please take charge. Take charge of your life. Take charge of the destiny of your children. Take charge of the destiny of your family. Don't allow anybody to begin to move you and pull you about. No, be in charge. And how one of the ways to be in charge is to make sure that those things that will bring distractions, eliminate them. All those things that will bring distractions your way, eliminate them. And focus on the things of God. And God will honor you in the name of Jesus. I want to stop today. We are going to carry on next week from the teaching of Solomon. And may his good name be fully established in Jesus' name. I did a look at our uh, brethren, the church, they've heard these words. I want to pray that in line with your word that we should take charge the grace to take charge give to us in the name of Jesus people that were distractions to Solomon they were taken away we are not asking that people should be killed that's not what we are saying we are only saying that all those barriers people that will deny us of what we are supposed to be doing Lord please take them out of our lives and give us the grace to focus on the mission you are giving to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Thank you because of your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. I'm sure you are blessed. I'll see you next week. Amen.